over the decades, Craftsman has offered a variety of attachments and accessories for their drill presses. This video is the first in a series of videos that will cover many of these attachments and accessories. Hello, I'm Jeff and welcome to my shop. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the multi-speed attachment or MSA. So let's get started. All base model classic Craftsman drill presses, the 100 series and the 150 series, had two four-stage pulleys on them, which, depending on how you arrange the pulleys, you could get up to nine different speeds, ranging from 5,000 RPMs down to 610 RPMs. But 610 RPMs is still too fast to drill metal. Ironically, the previous manufacturer of drill presses for Craftsman, the Atlas Press Company, had a solution for this. Atlas's solution was originally called the Slow Speed Attachment and was renamed the Multi Speed Attachment. This attachment was essentially a third pulley introduced into the system and gave you 12 speed options as opposed to the original 9 speed options. With the MSA installed, a user could get a speed as slow as 175 RPMs or as fast as 17,500 RPMs, all from the same 1750 RPM motor. For a comprehensive overview of the MSA, I've asked a friend of mine from Garage Journal, Paul, to make a short video for inclusion in this video, and I hope you enjoy it. Hi, my name is Paul. I'm a friend of Jeff's, and this is for Jeff's Shop. I'm going to do a segment on the Craftsman Multi-Speed Attachment, or MSA. The MSA was offered throughout the entire production run of the Craftsman 100 and 150. Here you see it in the 1948 Craftsman catalog. You'll notice there's two there. The one on the right was the slow speed pulley for the Atlas made drill press. And here it is in the 1966 Craftsman catalog. Here are some of the parts. The cast iron outer collar the cast iron base or the body and of course the pulley and the hardware the two rings go on the collar the set screws in the base and those smaller three screws keep the bearings in place and the bearings and post Regarding the bearings, three different kind came on these MSAs. Initially, they were Norma bearings made in the United States, and then Hoover bearings, which could have been made in the US or Japan, and then finally the Nachi bearings, which were made in Japan. During the almost 20 year span of the MSA pulley, at least three different style of cast iron body has been seen. Here you see those examples. Uh, the one in the middle was the last and that one is stamped with the Emerson vendor code. Obviously the engineers were on it and uh, kept refining it. Here are two examples of the different type of wear you'll see on the MSA uh, because some are 55 years old and some are 75 years old you're gonna see all different manner of wear the one on the left shows that the sheave was allowed to ride on the cast iron body and basically wore off the serial number so you'll want to periodically check to make sure the bottom pulley sheave is not riding on the cast iron body for the most part, the examples I've shown you have been cleaned up. Uh, when you do find one on a Craftsman drill press, this is usually the condition you will find it in. Dirty. Um, this one is actually not that bad. Diluted simple green will usually take care of that. Here is an MSA disassembly process. 
you'll note that the outer cast iron collar is attached to the body. That is because that set screw that I am loosening right now was tightened. Once loosened, the collar will slip right off. Here is the set screw that holds the post in place. And you'll see there's a groove on that post. And there are three screws that should be all the way in. I back these out a little bit for this video just so you're not watching me back out three screws um, the whole time. So once you get these screws backed out you'll see that the bearings will slide right out and that post. Depending on how dirty the MSA is these bearings are either going to slide out easy or not so easy. Here you see it somewhat back together, the three basic components. Again, there's the set screw that's going to hold that post in place. And you are going to want to make sure that that set screw is definitely riding inside that groove. If not, you're going to be that guy whose serial number is missing because that she will write on it and take it right off. So the set screw is tightened and it's not going anywhere now. Here's that longer set screw that makes contact with the outer collar and you can just see this shows the relationship it has with the outer collar and how it makes contact. Here it is on the table of my 1958 Craftsman drill press. The column of every Craftsman 100 and 150 during this era will have a lip inside the collar. There you can see it. And the purpose of that lip is so that when this collar goes inside, it doesn't fall straight to the bottom of the column. If you are wondering what the purpose of that collar is, it is so that it will fit two different column diameters. Uh, with it in place, it'll fit the Craftsman 100 and 150. And if you disregard the collar and just put the MSA in, it will fit a Craftsman 80, the smaller diameter. Here you can see that it is offset and of course that is to facilitate belt changes and for tightening. There again you'll want to check is the lowest sheave riding on the cast iron body or not. So once it's in You'll grab your 532nd hex and tighten it down. Does not need to be too tight. It's driving into that cast iron outer collar. And here it is running. I keep mine pretty reduced in this setup. It is 175 RPMs for metal work. Yes, I used linked belts. I know not everyone is a fan. I'm not using this thing every single day and they work very well for me. Here is the instruction manual that would have come with it from Craftsman. And here is the formatting for how you want to set it up and what speeds you want to use. I really hope you enjoyed this video on the MSA, this overview, and if you have any questions whatsoever, by all means, contact Jeff. Thank you, Paul, for that outstanding segment, and we will have more from Paul in later videos. So you've gone out and purchased a 100 or a 150 series drill press, and you want the same capabilities, but you can't find one of those MSAs. There's a solution for that. 
I have a friend that's on Garage Journal Forum, and he makes MSA that he calls the Slow Speed Pulley. His username on the forum is Jay Ziggy, and he sells these MSAs for a very reasonable price, considering that he's manufacturing them completely by hand. I run them on both of my 150 drill presses, and they're outstanding products. Well, I think that covers the MSA. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and subscribe. And as a parting bonus, here's a short video of my MSA that Jay Ziggy made running on my drill press. Be sure to check out the description for this video. There will be several links there that you may find helpful, as well as a link to Jay Ziggy's thread on the Garage Journal forum. Also, if you haven't seen any of my previous videos on the Classic Craftsman Drill Press, I'll put a link to the first in those series of videos at the top of the screen now. And again, thanks for the interest. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this. And I will see you next time.